welcome to the Revere Veterans Corner in conjunction with the Revere Veterans Service and the Revere Ally Veterans Council. Before we start today's show, I would like to see the logo behind me. That the logo that you see here was designed by Sergio Leone, who I think did a beautiful job. Rick Thomas, who does all the TV that you see on the air, does an excellent job. And of course, Bob Dunbar co coordinates the whole thing. Terrific job. And today we have a special guest, and her name is Eileen Murillo, who has spent three years in the Women's Army Medical Corps, WAMC, at the Walter Reed Hospital, was as a physical therapist. She would like to speak about the woman of Revere, so Eileen, I'm going to turn some of it over to you. But before we do that, uh, we would like to see the logo that Sergio Leone made for your organization. And as you look to straight ahead, you can see the Women's Veterans World War II Memorial. Yeah. So Eileen, please. All right, thank you, Morris. Uh, as you said, I graduated from Revere High. I went to Boston University and Salem State University where I got my master's, and Fitchburg State University where I got my master's. And then I joined the Army at Walter Reed, and when I came out of the Army, I worked for the polio foundation in Peoria, Illinois, where they have a very bad epidemic, and I went there. Then I went to the Chelsea Naval Hospital to treat the naval veterans and the naval uh, men and Marines that were uh, patients there, and I stayed there for five years. And then after that, uh, I married a handsome man, Roland Marullo, and an attorney, and I had three sons. Then I taught in Revere school system for 25 years. And after that, I volunteered for the Generations uh, Reading Group at McKinley School. I did that for five years. And uh, so I had a little experience in education. Uh, the other day, I was uh, down Broadway shopping, and a little girl said to me, what's on your hat? So I took my hat off for her, and I said, it says, uh, United States Army veteran. And so she said, oh, were you in the Army? And I said, yes, I was in the Army. And she said, uh, uh, all right, w well, why, why were you in the Army? Why? And so I said, well, first of all, in my neighborhood, believe it or not, during the war, there were 15 boys just around my neighborhood that were in the service, boys that I had played with. In fact, one of them was uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Hill, that the new school is named after. Another one was the Cronin boy that the skating rink is named after. And another one was Charlie McMacken that the Little League Park was named after. So, and then I, my brother was in the service, my brother-in-laws were in the service, my cousin, one of them was missing in action, and my girl cousin, believe it or not, she was in the Marines. So at that, the little girl gasped, oh, a girl in the Marines? And I said, yes. So she said, then, and what did you do? And I said, well, I joined the Army. And, uh, and as I said, I was stationed at Walter Reed Hospital. And oh, I didn't know there were any girls in the Army. Oh, sure, there were plenty of girls in the Army. Um, let me read this article. Uh, Please do. Do you have a, minute, a few minutes? It Take says, all the um, time you need, Eileen. All this right. is your show now. Good, thanks. At last year's Memorial Day services, I read aloud some of the names of men from Revere who served and died in World War II. It brought me back memories of boys whom I had danced with at the Spanish Gables down the beach, ice skated with on the Olive Street pits, ice skating, and swam in Revere Beach in, in my younger days with a lot of those boys. I thought how wonderfully reading the names refreshed my memories. And then I wondered if my sister, Lois Haydock, or my cousin, Eleanor Dillon, or the other 141 Revere women veterans who also served during World War II would ever be remembered for their services. That's how the thought of the Women's Memorial began. 
So I spoke with Nick Boa, ve the veterans agent, Mayor Rizzo, and the wonderful veterans representative at the senior center, Morris Morris. They all thought it was a great idea to have a memorial for revere women who served in World War II. The groundwork has started. The style, the shape of the memorial stone is selected. The place where it will reside has been decided. That's the, the lawn of the Legion. And now, all there is left to do is to ask the residents of Revere and neighboring cities and states for donations. Any amount, no matter how small, will be gratefully appreciated. So your checks can be sent to the Revere Women's Veterans World War II Memorial, and they could be addressed to the People's United Bank and th Revere Women W2 Memorial, 310 Broadway, Revere, Mass. So that is more or less why this idea came about, Morris. And uh, I went to you, and you were so helpful, and we've been working on it ever since. Right, Eileen. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to thank you, because 99% of the work was really done by you. And if I may just look at this list here, which you will start off to read. All right. You did all the legwork. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Of 141 names of the woman of Revere, and you had to dig out each one individually, really, to get this list in here. So what we would like to, what I would like to do, and have you started off, to read the names of the women who were from Revere. Now, one question: uh, These are the names before they were married, or some of them might have been married during the time, well, too? Well, most of them are maiden names. Okay, why most don't you start off with page one? All right. I'll do two, you do three. All right, and hopefully, while we read these, that will, it will stir up the memories of some of the relatives. Right. And if they think of someone that I had uh, left out. Please call you at um, the Revere Senior Center, 781-286-8156, and leave a message there. Absolutely. So let me begin. Um, Diana Alvino, Elena Alvino, Ursula Asenault, Eileen Aylwood, Esther Barboni, Mary Barnacle, Evelyn Barrett, Anna Barry, Ruth Barry, Helen Becker, Dorothy Berger, Rosanna Bergeron, Adelaide Bishop, Phyllis Bishop, Ethel Blaisdell, Sylvia Blotcher, Mary Baraska, Ruth Brown, Valerie uh, Buckingham, Josephine Camalingo, Emma Cole, Francis Coleman, and Adele Cassetti. That's some of them. Now, on page two, we have <coughs> Marie Cowick. Marjorie Cowick, Isabel Crowley, Catherine Cummings, Dorothy Curry, Myrtle Decker, Barbara Delano, Alice DeLaurie, Dorothy DiNapoli, Eleanor Dillon, Claire Dooley, Eleanor Dooley, Edna Doucette, Gertrude Dyke, Alice Edwards, Evelyn Ekstrom, Cora Fabiano, Catherine Fagan, Irene Fagan, Marguerite Fenley, Anna Farragamo, Pauline Ferrari, June Farrell, Alice Fitch, Eva Floyd, Gladys Forsythe, and Shirley Gale. That brings back a lot of memories to me <coughs> while you're reading <coughs> those names. Bernice Gilfin, Carolyn Gilbert, Mary Gilman, Estelle Gilman, Sylvia Jim Whiskey, Harriet Gold, Jeanette Goldberg, Sylvia Goldberg, Marie Graff, Mary Griffin, Helen Hamilton, Edith Hardick, Arlene Harding, Helen Hawkins, Mabel Harris, Eileen Haydock, Lois Haydock, my sister, by the way, Lena Hayes, Mary Hayes, Eileen Hurley, Jeanette Huffman, Hilda Katz, 
Mary Keefe, Doris Kepit, Irene Kisser, and Esther Kinney. Remember, those are maiden names, so you may know them by a different name. And here we have Eleanor Kramer, Gertrude Lafley, Ethel Lazarus, Mildred Lazarus, Bernice McDonald, Eleanor McDonald, Virginia McInnes, Jean McClellan, Eunice Martin, Francis Maselli, Janet McGregor, Ruth McPike, Dorothy Messer, Anna Morrissey, Blanche Morrissey, Eleanor Mortimer, Marguerite Moshe, Eleanor Mulligan, Jeanette Murphy, Margaret Murphy, Miriam Nelson, Dorothy Nigro, Dorothy Novus, Mary O'Donnell, and Irene Pearson. Great. That's quite a list. Yeah, a lot of footwork. And uh, Eleanor Pike, Phyllis Pisano, Sylvia Price, Margaret Rafferty, Evelyn Rapucci, Sabina Regioni, which you might remember was the school nurse, Alice Rosenberg, Florence Rosenberg, Ida Rollins, Francis Rubin, Irene Sandler, who was a gym teacher in Revere, Anna Santa, Gloria Scapa, Gertrude Schaefer, Gloria Shanahan, Beatrice Schulman, Rebecca Silberwitz, Mary Silverman, Annabelle Simonson, June Simonson, Harriet Smith, Elizabeth Spain, Annabelle St. Clair, Margaret Sermon, Mary Ann Sermon, and Mary Sweeney. Thank you. And the final list is Martha Sweetnam, Minnie Dorison, Bertha Torp, Rose Vassure, Lila Vesci, Rita Waldron, Blanche Walsh, Barbara Weimar, Evelyn Wheeler, Rita White, Ruth Williams, Jeanette Winterman, Ruth Winston, and Ann Wine. Quite a list, Eileen. That was quite a list. And I hope we didn't leave anyone else, but no. if we did, be sure to notify us. Right. You could call the Revere Veterans Service at 286-8119, and Nick Bull would take care of that, or to call the Senior Center, Eileen Marillo, 781-286-8156, and you will take care of that. And by the way, Morris, there's a wonderful article in the Revere Journal, and oh, we yes. want to thank them for that. Yes, I would like to show this. By coincidence, the Revere Journal wrote an article on the Revere Journal dated today, which is January the 16th, about seeking recognition for 141 women from Revere who served in World War II, and Eileen is the one that helped write this article. So thank you for that, Eileen. And thanks the journal for putting it in. As thanks Seth Daniels for taking the Absolutely. time to do it. <laughs> okay, by the way, I happen to find this picture in the newspaper. This happens to be Eileen Murillo, which I would like to show to the camera there or to the camera here. Eileen, you are the one in the middle. Could you tell who the other young ladies are, if you can remember some of them? Well, I, most of those women, this picture was taken when we, were, when we went over to sign in. So most of those women were not familiar to me. They're not, and I had, when we went out to basic training, I have no idea where they went. Oh, okay. But the idea is that we were all going to go together because we all had the same feeling that we'd rather be with them than waiting. So to answer that little girl's question, why did you go into the service? There's the answer right there. We'd rather be with them than waiting. Right, and also I would like to reiterate and say this if I may. I hope that the Revere Journal and the Revere Advocate and also Revere TV will help Eileen raise the funds so her dream for the memorial for the 141 women plus may come true, Eileen. That's fantastic. Now, what are your future plans, if I may ask you? What do you intend to do in the future? Well, what has to be done now is we, we're having a logo made up by this wonderful Zergy. And uh, once we have that logo, I have a list of maybe a thousand names that we're going to send the logo and uh, the, a notice to asking for donations. 
So that's the main thing now, is to get the donations so that we can make this memorial come true. By the way, can I make a suggestion to you? Certainly. There's More a newspaper. Than Maria. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. There's a newspaper that comes out by the one of Revere. It's called the Revere Moose Lodge, Post 1272. They write a beautiful article always in the back about the Revere Veterans Corner. Oh, nice. And they list all the things that's going on for Revere, what the veterans are doing. I would suggest you contact them. The man you, I believe, who's in charge is uh, the governor there. His name is Wes Clemens. Wes Clemens. Right. And you speak to him what you would like to do and ask him if he would be kind enough to write an article for you on the Revere Moose. Now, let me tell you, the Moose does a lot of things for the veterans. They have veterans functions. They have articles of, like what they do in February, January. They have parties for veterans. They have breakfast uh, Sundays. So if, you, if there are no members that have not yet joined the Moose, I would suggest they do so because it is a very fantastic, good organization for the city of Revere, the community, and as well as for the veterans. So I'm sure they will help you in every way they can. Sure. That's a great idea. That's the moose right down on Broadway. Exactly. Revere. I think I ha might have. Yes, it is. 470 Broadway, Revere, Mass. Right. So right. you can't miss it. Okay. Right. I would also suggest you contact the Revere Senior Center newspaper. Oh, that's a good idea too, Morris. You're full of ideas today. Well, I, that's because I have a fantastic twin brother that helps oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> May I tell you one little story? Please about do. A, and, and this is about when I was at Walter Reed. If w Everyone knows when they're in the service. If anyone d came from anywhere near their area, they were a neighbor of theirs. They hung on to them, and they clung to them, and they spoke to them, and they were pals. Well, as I would tr was treating patients, I noticed one of them came from Chelsea, Massachusetts, and he was a lower leg amputee. So I became more friendly with him and gave him extra special attention and worked on him and worked on him and found out that he had a girlfriend in Chelsea and when he got well he was going to go back home and marry the girl, which is great. So we worked very hard to get his leg in order and have a, a, a prosthesis put on. Well, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Morris, but most, a lot of people were not. There was such a thing called a Dear John letter. I remember them. That, and <laughs> I didn't get one, but I remember them. Good, I'm glad you didn't. So <laughs> what happened is that the girlfriends of the men in service, if, they had, if the men had lost a leg or lost an arm or were seriously ill, then they wrote them a letter. Dear John, I'm sorry you lost your leg. Now you lost your girl which broke the heart of the men. Well, this fellow I'll call Sam, he got a Dear John letter from the girl. That was it. He wouldn't do a thing. He wouldn't exercise. He wouldn't even come down to the clinic. I had to force him, go and get him. He started to drink a little bit too much, which was absolutely wrong. So I got on him. I said, listen to me, Sam. You're a neighbor of mine. You're not going to behave like this. You're going to get well, and you're going to go home. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. I said, yes, you are. So get on the table and let me work on you. So I did. I forced him. I pushed him. I made him. <laughs> I was right on him, Morris. So he did get his prosthesis on and went home. So about a year later, and I was discharged from the Army at that time, and I was at home with my parents. The doorbell rang. My father answered it. He said, it's for, there's a gentleman here for you. There was Sam with a big smile on his face, a big box of candy, a big bouquet of flowers, and a bigger hug for me because he m married the girl in Chelsea. See? See? That's fantastic. Isn't that a nice story? Excellent story yeah. on there. By the way, Eileen, here's another suggestion. You know, the city of Revere has a wall that heals, mm -hmm. if I may say. That will be coming June 13, 14, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. They will also be looking for donations, and that will be headed by Lenny Piazza. Oh, um, yes. If you know Lenny, yeah, um, he will be heading that wall. And Al Terminello will be doing the publicity for the wall, and Al is a terrific publicity, yes, yeah. publicity person. True. 
So maybe even when the wall is here, June 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th, by the way, folks, it will be open 24 hours a day. Please come down and see it. Where is it going to be, Morris? It's going to be at the Beachmont VFW on 150 Bennington Street. Oh, yeah. Right next to the school in there. And maybe you can speak to some of the people down there when they come down, if you show up, that they might help you as on the wall because the wall is only going to be here for four days and then it's gone. Yeah. The memorial that you're looking for is going to be here for hundreds of years because I've been down to the Rumney Mar Cemetery. I've seen stones that are over 300 years can old. Imagine and that. they weren't made in those days the way they're made today. Yeah. So 300 years from now, you and I will certainly not be around, I hope and most not. of the people watching the show will not yeah, be around. We hope not. <laughs> so the the memory of those women of World War II will be around, yeah, and it would be, be nice great. to have donations for them. So Definitely. when they come down, I'm sure they'll try and help you. You speak to the women of Revere, especially the ones, the citizens of Revere, they will be happy to help you, and of course. The men of Rivia will definitely be happy All right, to help well, I'll you. be there, Morris, okay. and, uh, and I hope a lot of the women will come and help right. to, to donate. And yeah. we'll be looking for volunteers, Eileen, to come down to even help us at the wall. Wonderful. So, you know, they can call Nick Boer at 781-286-8119, a volunteer to services, so that when the wall comes here, there'll always be people there, and especially if they can use a computer, which I cannot. And they would need computers to read off the names that are on there. Right. And maybe there would be some people from Revere on there, right. which because I'm sure there will be, because sure. there is a memorial now at the Legion honoring some of the veterans that were killed in Vietnam in Afghanistan. As you know, Morris, a lot of the people that, are, that were born and bred here in Revere, they moved out. But if they get the paper or they come and see the wall or they see it on TV, it will refresh their memory of the, of the women that went into the service. Right, but you know something i got to say about the city. I'm originally from New York, but I've lived here over 64 years. I've been married 63. Yeah, 64. To the same woman, Ma Morris? As far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always tell a little joke. Can I tell you a little sure, joke absolutely, about that? absolutely, if it's clean. Very clean. All right. I always tell people that I've been married to my same woman for six, um, well, I've been married 63 years, and when I come home at night, mm -hmm. my supper is cooked, yeah. my laundry is done, mm -hmm. lots of love and hugging and kissing, yeah. and then I realized I was in the wrong house. Oh, my night. goodness. <laughs> and if my wife sees that, it's only a joke. It's only a joke. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, I would like to say a couple of other things, if I may. Certainly, Morris. Nick Bua is looking for flags that are shredded, this torn that he wants to have, I believe, on May 19th at the Matola Post, the mm -hmm. retirement of the flag. So anyone out there who has flags that they want to get rid of, do not throw them away, do not burn them, drop them off at the Veterans Service down at 249 Broadway or at the Senior Center, and they'll be burned on May the 19th at the Matola Post. Where is the Matola Post? I think it's down on Garifalda, Garifalda Street, uh, down, by Street? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, down by St. Anthony's. Yeah, down by St. Anthony's, right. right. Okay, then we have the wall, Vietnam Wall coming, like I said, June 13, 14, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Columbus Day Parade. Well, that's good. And then we have the memorial, and I left out the Memorial Day, which will be at the American Legion. That'll be on a Monday, I believe, May 27th. 27th, right. yeah. So all the people there, they're welcome to come. We'd love to have them. And, and, uh, and I'll be there collecting. I, I'm sure you will be. Uh, and by the way, we'll get people to help you. Now, we're not young. I mean, we're old. I mean, the Second World War generation. You don't want to tell us how old we are, do no, we? No, no, they know how old we oh, are. Yeah, I mean, the can... war's been over, what, 1945, <laughs> 67 years, 68 oh, years? Oh, so, so figure out, you had to be 68 years plus 17. <laughs> Okay. All right, Morris. That's to enough. To get in, because at 17 was the age you could get in. Right, exactly. Okay. So if the war's been over 65 years, 17, you would have to be a minimum of 82, 83. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to tell them how old you are, but I mean, maybe in 20 years I will, though. All right, good. Mean, mean. God willing. Okay. Now, we're going to be winding down this show, but before we close, I would like to thank and bless the residents of Revere. Definitely bless our troops that are overseas. Absolutely. And bless this great country that you and I live in, the United States of America, who has given us all the freedom. And freedom does not come cheap. And to all the people out there watching this show, thank you for watching. Until the next time we meet again, have a nice day.
Thank you. Thank you.